what the heck is people first content? Let's use the clues that Google is giving us. And here are some more examples. This is part two of what the heck is people first content cracking the code. If you missed part one, I'll link it here in this video. Now this came to my attention through a colleague. Some of you might remember I did a video about the shavercheck.com website because they are recovering well after being hit by a Google helpful content update. Now, I personally didn't see what type of changes they had made to the site, but my colleague certainly did dial into something and mentioned that it was written in a first person's perspective. And it was always written in first person perspective, but the changes that they made doubled down on the first person perspective. Now let's clear that up and go over a clue that Google has given us. So my colleague also found this on Twitter. It was regarding a post that was left by someone that does SEO. And they were saying that blogging was dead and Google was killing it. And then Google search liaison, also known as Danny Sullivan left a comment that was really interesting that goes over what an example of people first content. So he mentioned that if your audience wants to know about fun things you did today, and that's why you wrote it, that's helpful. Write about anything that you think human beings coming directly to your blog would like to hear. That's great. But if you wrote, and this is where you need to pay attention, if you wrote, 20 fun things you can do today because your primary purpose is doing so that you wanted to rank well for fun things. That is unhelpful. What was pointed out about Shaver Checker is that it's all written in first person perspective. And then they doubled down on that when they made changes and started to recover from the Google helpful content update. Now, this is just observing from the outside. But if you read the review, and this is actually a review on about 10 of these razors, they say over and over again that they use the razor, what happened when they used the razor, and why they would or wouldn't recommend this to somebody else. Now, this comment helped me form a clearer picture of what Google is actually looking for. And so I came up with some examples so that I can show you. So a lot of times in typical blogs, we write something like 85 fun things to do in Texas for kids and adults, because we're looking for that search engine traffic for fun things to do in Texas for kids and adults. Typically, how I see a lot of the blogs written are they just begin to describe the 85 things like go here, this is family oriented, you're going to love it, and they have XYZ at this place, right? That's how, and here's the directions to get there. This is their address. This is when they're open. However, if you reread what this comment was saying is if your audience wants to know about what fun things you did today, that would be helpful. So to write this blog, how I would write it after reading that comment is 80 fun things I did in Houston today with kids and adults or something that alludes that I did it and I did these 85 things and I did it with kids and my husband or kids and adults, however you want to word it. But the focus being on it's what I did. I did these 85 fun things. And instead of just describing Space Center Houston, I would talk about what happened when I went there. You know, maybe I couldn't go in through one of the entrances because there was construction. So I had to go through a different entrance. And then I had XYZ at the snack bar. And then my kids really liked this better than that. A perspective through my eyes, through my personal blog. Now, a lot of us are complaining that Reddit has stolen a lot of the spots. But if you look at Reddit, a lot of times they're talking about what experiences those users had at that place. So I'm still using the fun things to do in Houston as an example. And if you read through some of the comments, they're talking about what they did there or what they liked the most or what would it what it was like when they were there during such and such dates. And if their family liked it or if their kids liked it, it's like more of a, rec a personal recommendation instead of just writing 85 fun things to do that I didn't do any of them. I'm just picking 
the top 85 best things to do in Houston. But, you know, I personally can't tell you what happened there because I didn't do any of them. It's about how you're writing and what writing you're in the perspective that you're coming from. If you take a look at TripAdvisor, they have a lot of first person perspectives. They're voting on what they like the most. Everyone is talking about what they did when they were there. It's all first person perspective. Now, if you missed part one, I'll link it here. But here is one more example, but this is actually first person perspective. So there's a blog called traveladdicts.net and they write about the things or the places that they travel to. So this is talking about 38 things to do in Austin, Texas. At the very top, they talk about how they have affiliate links. And if you buy something through their links, they will earn a small commission. This is an affiliate site. However, how they themed it and talk about all of these experiences is what happened when they were there, what they experienced, and what they liked. But how they could even double down on their first person perspective is when they describe swimming at Barton Springs Pool. If you would add in what happened when you were there or what you liked the most or what stood out to you. Now, they started off the blog really well in theming it and talking about this is how they travel. And as they make affiliate money, they go from one place to the next and then they write about it. But you could actually double it down with how you write your content and explaining it all in first person perspective. So if your website has not recovered, take a look at how you wrote what you wrote. Did you write it for your audience? Did you write it for yourself? And does it refer to experiences that you have had? If you're talking about razors, did you talk about how you tried the razor and what happened when you tried the razor? Or are you just describing the razor, the pros, the cons, and then leaving it at that? Just a basic review, but not coming from a first person perspective. And if you're coming from a first person perspective, you're also having more original content. It's just more food for thought as we take a look at the clues that Google is leaving us all around. This may or may not pertain to every single site that got hit, but it's certainly something that you can look at today and see if you need to make any adjustments. That is certainly an easy change that can be made across sites.